Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Council of the Town of Oakville. I now call the meeting to order. I invite the public to join Council in rising for the singing of O Canada. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. As is our custom, I'll now give our opening prayer, followed by our moment of silent reflection, and then we'll begin the meeting proper. God grant us understanding and patience that justice, truth, and honesty may be evident in our decisions. Make us mindful of the needs of the people throughout the town of Oakville. Help us govern with the wider community in mind and so create in us a desire for progress and responsible action. We ask this in your name, amen. Thank you, everyone. Um, I see we have no regrets this evening. We have full attendance. Council, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Thank you. Um, is there a mover and seconder or corrections for the minutes before you in the agenda? Councillor Kahn and Councillor Adams are moving the minutes. Any separations or changes? All in favor? Opposed, if any, the minutes are adopted. Um, we now have a number of um, public presentations, and uh, the very first one I'm pleased to say is um, First Responders Day. I have proclaimed May 1st, 2014 as First Responders Day in Oakville to acknowledge all the men and women of Oakville who serve as fire officials, law enforcement, and paramedics for putting their lives on the line every day for our community. I've prepared a copy of our proclamation to give each service and I, I want to say that uh, I thank uh, Frank Cleese, the MPP from Newmarket, for the initiative that has set May 1st with the unanimous consent of the legislature as First Responders Day. And that's in a couple of days. Um, our council meeting isn't jumping the gun. We're just the first, I hope, to be able to recognize this day. Uh, and, at, and, and for council, no better time than a council meeting. And uh, with us tonight, is the province's Minister of Labor, Oakville MPP, Kevin Flynn. And uh, he has a few remarks for the occasion. And Minister, it would be uh, our pleasure to hear you at the podium. Thank you, Worship. It is a pleasure to be here. And members of council, it's a pleasure to see you all here as well. And certainly it gives me great pleasure to be here. And I think, uh, I hope we are the first community in uh, the province of Ontario uh, to formally recognize this day. But uh, I can tell you that from serving with my colleagues at Queen's Park, we often see different types of adversity in the province. We often see Northern Ontario has its problems with things like forest fires. Southern Ontario has its problems with things like crime, with things like traffic accidents. 
But what we see, uh, what we see a real equity and a really high level uh, of quality in is the first responders. It's those people in our community, those people who are, the f who are the first out of the door, who are the first in their cars, in their trucks, whatever vehicles it takes them to get to the scene of something that obviously means an awful lot to our community and is something that we are really thankful that there are people have chosen these professions and we've ch they were so pleased that they excel at those professions. When this idea was brought forward to the legislature, as, as, uh, as you noted, Your Worship, it did receive unanimous support from all parties. So it's a pleasure for me to be here today on behalf of the Honorable Yasser Nakbi, the Minister of Community Safety, and uh, Premier Wynn, Premier of the Province of Ontario, to thank you for what you have done as a council, but more importantly, to thank the men and women behind me here who have done so much for our community. So I'm, uh, I'm just here to say thank you very much to all involved in this day. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, and now uh, I'm gonna bring the, a copy of the proclamation uh, to join you uh, for each of the services. And, um, and uh, we'll turn around and face the photographer uh, who would like a picture. So uh, everybody will just cooperate with us for a second. We'll Now, next on the list, um, at the behest of uh, Councillor Adams, I uh, proclaim July 20th, 2014, as Gabrielle's Ride Day in Oakville, inspired by the life of Gabrielle Edie Sinani, in support of Sick Kids Foundation for Congenital Heart Disease and Pediatric Stroke. And uh, the proclamation reads, Whereas congenital heart disease is the most common birth defect affecting one in 100 children, one in 1,500 newborn babies and one in 25,000 children will suffer a stroke. And whereas funds raised by Gabrielle's Ride will support the Sick Kids Foundation and will be used for life-saving research, the development of social programs, and the support of families affected by congenital heart disease and pediatric stroke. In their first year, Gabrielle's Ride raised over $75,000 for Sick Kids Hospital and is supporting the world's first cardioembolic symposium. Together, we are improving the lives of children and families across Canada who face the challenges of heart disease and stroke. And whereas July 20th is Gabrielle's Day in Oakville, on which the campaign takes place to support ongoing research and programs, and whereas we applaud and commend the volunteers, staff, and researchers of Gabrielle's Ride, for their dedication and commitment and wish them continued success. Now therefore, I, Rob Burton, Mayor of the Town of Oakville, do hereby proclaim that July 20th, 2014, be observed as Gabrielle's Day in the Town of Oakville, 
I further urge all citizens to give this campaign the greatest possible support. And I would invite Councillor Adams to join me in presenting the plaque to the representatives of Gabrielle's Ride. Next, it's with a great deal of pride and pleasure that I acknowledge receipt of the LEED Silver Certification received by the town on, a, on the uh, new transit building. Um, I don't think the staff and I have ever quite settled on a term we can all, both believe in. I like to call it the Transit Depot, and I think the town manager prefers to say the Transit Facility, because it sounds uh, a bit better to him. I should defer to him. He spent uh, so much more of his career in transportation than, than ever I will. So the transit facility, uh, I'll say. Um, this is a very big deal to this council. And, um, and the reason for that is that we, have a, we adopted a policy that all new buildings uh, that the town will build will qualify for lead silver. And uh, and uh, to judge by the fact that we're several years into uh, the operation, that we opened it several years ago in 2010, I think, or 2011. Maybe it was 2011. Um, and it's now 2014. I take that as evidence it's not easy to get. And so I congratulate you all the more for the achievement, and I thank you very much. Council, this is where you applaud them. <laughs> And now is Chris, yes, there's Chris. We now have a presentation by Chris Clapham from the Engineering and Construction Department regarding item nine, 2014 Active Transportation Capital Program, which is um, a, a presentation that the Community Services Standing Committee has uh, forwarded to the entire council so that uh, everyone gets to see it. The public, I'm not sure, is aware that council divides into two standing committees of equal size six uh, councillors and the mayor on each one. One is community services, one is administrative services. So community services liked this so much, they wanted to make sure that everyone, including the councillors who are on administrative services, could see it. And so, over to Chris. Thank you. Well, as we wait for that to uh, come up on the screen, um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for allowing me to come back, especially after myself being ill last month and after the recommendations being approved. I'm sure that doesn't happen too often. <laughs> and I think it shows a lot of confidence and support for staff's hard work and I appreciate that and I want to thank each and every one of you. Thank you. So quickly, I'd like to provide an overview of my presentation this evening for the 2014 Active Transportation Capital Program. I'm going to provide a quick background of the Active Transportation Master Plan and its associated network. 
I will then update you on the 2013 Active Transportation Capital Program and then have a review of this year's program. I'm also going to provide some details on a new program we have called the Active Transportation Initiatives Plan in this year's capital budget. We will have a quick look at the maintenance program within the town for last year and this year coming up and I'd like to discuss the funding for this year and finally then the next steps. Council approved the Active Transportation Master Plan in October of 2009 and then followed that up by approving the first capital plan in September of 2010. We be began, begilding, begin, sorry, began building the infrastructure in July 2011. We then had Council approve the Switching Gears Transportation Master Plan in July 2012 and we followed that up with the North Oakville Trails Plan in May 2013. This here is an illustration from the Active Transportation Master Plan, the spine network as well as the secondary network. It's essentially a grid of north-south, east-west routes upon our transportation corridors, our linear parks, valleys, our utility corridors, as well as we've incorporated grade separated crossings of major roadways, highways, and creeks, valleys. The two systems, the one being the primary town-wide spine system as we refer to it is the blue lines and the secondary local neighborhood system being the red lines. This here is an illustration from last year's report of the 2013 plan. I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit. The 2013 capital program outlined 20 kilometers of new infrastructure, 16 kilometers of new facilities were implemented, approximately half were bike lanes and the other half were signed bicycle routes. Staff also installed 38 ring and post bike racks in the downtown core. Should also be noted that there, have, there are still some outstanding projects from previous years as well. You can please refer to the staff report, Appendix D, for the detailed list. Two, notably, our Ford Drive. We had some delays due to some other regional work occurring along the corridor. We're hoping to tender that in early June this year. And the second being Lakeshore Road, we had some design constraints and we'd still like to go through some additional public consultation, so we're hoping to initiate that this spring as well. The 2013 capital program also had some initiatives for outreach involved in it, one being an update to the Cycle Walk Oakville map, which we did electronically and as a hard copy. We also participated in the yearly clean air commute in June 2013. We also participated in the active and safe routes to school program with the region with some meetings and we also assisted some schools who were doing the program on their own. And we also continued to support the local cycling groups as well. This is the 2014 capital program. You can see all of the roadways highlighted in pink that we are hoping to initiate this year. Typically, we try to provide a high priority to that primary spine system, which I described earlier. We also look at stakeholder concerns and trying to connect the neighborhoods, commercial, employment, institutional areas, for instance. With this in mind, several of the projects may need to undergo, to undergo a design feasibility study this year. You can please refer to Appendix C for a complete list of the recommended projects. The projects that will be completed also include tap capital, town capital road projects, traffic calming projects, and Halton capital road projects as well. These active transportation projects are funded separately by the town as a component of those larger projects. Taking all of the proposed projects into consideration, approximately 31 kilometers of new active transportation infrastructure is anticipated to be initiated this year. At CSC in March, Mr. Cozy provided an update on the Trafalgar Road QEW overpass and the pedestrian concerns that we all have on that roadway and the discussions that were occurring with the MTO. These discussions are still ongoing and staff will continue to provide council with an update as we move forward. As I mentioned earlier, the 2014 Active Transportation Initiatives Plan 
has a lot of things that we can do this year. Some of them here are highlighted. The Cycle Walk Oakville map update through GIS is one initiative. We're going to expand the downtown bike racks. We are also going to initiate a watch, watch for bikes and road safety education program in consultation with the Rec and Culture Department. And uh, sorry, the, also the Road Works Operations Department as well. We're going to initiate a town-wide car share program feasibility study. We've all, we're also going to be involved in a share the road U cycle project with Sheridan College and trying to get more students to cycle to the school as well as into the downtown BIAs. We're also going to look at sheltered bicycle parking in downtown. We're also going to produce some more active transportation communication materials and we're going to continue to support those local, local cycling groups and their programs as well. As I mentioned, I quickly wanted to go over the 2013 maintenance program, and this here is a shot of 8th Line south of Upper Middle Road, the multi-use trail, the old one on the left, and you can see the widening that occurred this year to bring the trail up to minimum standards so two cyclists could pass safely along the multi-use trail, the one on the right being the newer one. Other projects included Brawny Road of the same nature, Dorval Drive, and this here is a shot of Notting Hill Gate that you can also see was widened. 2014, we're going to be initiating this type of project along Upper Middle Road between Third Line and Brawny Road. We're all, staff would also like to complete a review and assessment strategy to prioritize the existing infrastructure that we have for repairs and replacement. We'd like to ensure a state of good repair, maintenance strategy, and develop a funding strategy to deliver this program. I also wanted to quickly go over the funding for 2014, the active transportation capital plan being $250,000, traffic calming and capital roads at $65,000. The Brawny Road underpass has its own line item that we're going to be looking at this year near the QEW, the old roadway that we need to uh, upgrade at $460,000. Halton Region's projects along a lot of their linear corridors are, are quite expenses, expensive as well as the Metrolinx overpass. Those are just rough costing estimations at $3 million. And we also have that active transportation initiatives plan that I outlined is a two-year program at $137,000, bringing us to $3.9 million of projects that will be initiated this year for active transportation. Our next steps are to continue with this infrastructure implementation, continue with our outreach components, and continue to find funding strategies for future projects. And I believe all of us are aware of the recent announcement of the $25 million at the Ontario Bike Summit two weeks ago by the Minister. We will be looking at potential projects to prepare to apply for this Ministry of Transportation infrastructure grant. We're also going to develop a maintenance strategy, and I believe we will continue to change travel behavior within the town of Oakville, not only through this master plan, but also through the transportation master plan switching gears, as well as a lot of other components that this council has approved. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Clapham, for a great presentation. Council, do you have questions for Mr. Clapham? Councillor DeMoff. Thank you, uh, Chris, not just for your presentation, which was fabulous, but also for all the work you've done on this. It's much appreciated by all of us. Um, two points of clarification, if you would. You, you'd mentioned the downtown bike racks are going to be expanded. I think that's being expanded into other BIAs as well, though, is it not? Yes, through you, count, or Mayor, sorry, excuse me. Um, the Kerr Village and Brawny Village bike racks were in last year's capital program. So we have designed the placement of those. We have ordered okay. the bike racks and we will be installing them this year. The initiative for the 2014 plan is to expand the downtown area on the side streets, Church, Randall, and look at the opportunities that we may have to put the ring and post bike racks in that area. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Councillor Giddings. Thank you very much for the presentation. You mentioned Ford Drive uh, as a result of some work that the region was doing last year. Uh, we timed out on the construction season. You mentioned that the tender was being, 
it was going to be tendered in June. Is that for 2014 construction or could that be uh, delayed further? Through your worship, I believe it is our intention to have the tender out in early June. We're going through some of the final detailed design drawings right now and we will be constructing that as soon as possible. Excellent. And Lakeshore, timing on that? Lakeshore Road, we've run into a couple issues with regards to the design constraints, as I had mentioned, yeah. mostly to do with the elevation of where we would like the multi-use trail between Allen and Maple Grove Drive. Um, we believe that we need to enter into some more public consultation with some of the specific homeowners that we may affect. We will be doing that in June. Um, we would like to have some consultation with the local councillors as well to determine if we do need to go through public consultation strategy. And if we do, then we would be looking at the design later this year and then following up with construction, same as Ford Drive. Great. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you, Councillor Giddings. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Clapham. Thank you. Council, we now have a presentation from Councillor Pam DeMoff. Uh, on, uh, she's the co-founder of Cycle Oakville. And uh, uh, this concerns item nine of the 2014 Active Transportation Capital Program. And this too is referred from Community Services Committee's meeting of March 24th, uh, so that everyone could enjoy it. Councillor DeMoff, you have the floor. I'm not normally on this side. So, I'm actually here from beginning, right? Um, I'm here as the co-founder of Cycle Oakville, and I wanted to give you a little bit of background on who we were and some of the things that we're doing in Oakville. It was, seemed to be a good opportunity when Chris was doing his presentation on active transportation. So back in April 2012, we had a, a woman come up to speak from the um, Long Beach, California, who spoke about bicycle-friendly business districts. And these, this was the article that appeared in the newspaper at the time. And out of that grew uh, our organization, which is Cycle Oakville. And our, our intent is to get people to dine, shop, explore, and discover Oakville on their bicycles. So some of the things that we've done is, one of the first we did actually was a bike valet at Midnight Madness downtown Oakville. And the idea behind that was to get people to ride their bikes and leave them in a secure environment as opposed to driving down and parking their cars. And it was very successful and the people were there till well after 11 o'clock at night. Um, one of the, the second thing that we did uh, was a bike ride that went from downtown Oakville to Bronte Village. And I brought this along with me because the League of American Bicyclists actually put this same photograph in, in their magazine um, with an article, Bicycling Means Business. And it's all about, um, mentions Oakville as one of the places where we were trying to start the conversation about cycling and businesses. Um, we did a Halloween Kittical Mass ride. We have uh, Kyle Jones, who's our uh, Olympian triathlete, Canadian national champion, and he came out to help us. Unfortunately, on the day of the ride, it was cold and it was rainy, and the intent was to get a whole group of kids to ride to the Kerr Village Pumpkin Palooza. We did have one little boy who came out, and as someone said to me that day, when do we lose the uh, excitement of riding in the rain and through puddles and over hills? So little Momo got to ride with an Olympian and a police officer, so he was quite happy that day. We even got out in the snow. It was the worst day possible to ride to the shop local event in downtown Oakville, but as you will see, we put all of our bicycles in a parking spot in downtown, and all of us went and enjoyed the festivities. Um, we've, we've had a, a number of cycling education campaigns with Share the Road Cycling Coalition. One uh, was on Lakeshore Road uh, at Third Line and the other one was in Kerr Village to ask drivers and cyclists to share the road safely. And it's been an initiative with Share the Road and the Halton Regional Police. Uh, last year we did a, it was, it's called Cyclofem. It's um, 
It's held worldwide. We were the first location in Canada to do one. We're holding one again this year on May the 11th, and uh, it will be held from Gerlock Gardens to um, downtown. Another initiative that we did was the Canopy Tree Ride, or the Tour de Trees, in partnership with Oakville Green. And that's another ride that we're doing again this year on June the 8th. Karen Brock from Oakville Green actually led the ride for us. <coughs> We have been fortunate enough to get a grant from the Oakville Community Foundation that allowed us to get banners, t-shirts, um, some decals, and some blinky lights um, that we've handed out to people in Oakville to promote cycling and, and also sharing the road. Um, one of our most successful initiatives was a partnership with Share the Road and um, Grand Fondo Canada and the town of Oakville and having a bike valet at the Canadian Open last year. We, we had over a thousand bikes that were parked during the course of the week and it was definitely the way to get to the Canadian Open. Uh, Oakville's Black History Ride was incredibly successful. We, uh, we met in Bronte and we rode um, to the Oakville Museum for the Emancipation Day picnic. Um, there's a lovely brochure that's available at, uh, in paper format as well as in um, uh, online. But we're going to do the same thing again this year uh, in partnership with Whole Foods and Echo Partners. This year there'll be um, sort of a two-part ride in encouraging more people to go to the Emancipation Day picnic. And I said to someone after this ride, it was the, the first time anyone in Oakville saw so many cyclists on Lakeshore Road who were not in spandex. <laughs> We did a family fundo ride, again in partnership with Share the Road. It was a fundraiser, fam, sorry, Share the Road has a fundraising ride um, in September called Greg's Ride, and they always choose a local charity to partner with. And uh, from that ride, we were given a, a very generous donation from Share the Road, but they also organized this family fundo, and, and we had a tremendous turnout of families who came out for a free ride, and again, to ride with our um, favorite Olympian, Kyle Jones. So what's next? We are going to be having more social rides. Uh, we've got, we had one on East, Easter weekend in partnership with the Bronte BIA. We're going to be having the Mother's Day ride on June the 1st. There will be a Healthy Kids Day ride. Tour de Trees is June the 8th. Um, there will again be the Black History ride. And uh, we are having, in partnership with Racer Sportif downtown Oakville, free bicycle clinics. And these will focus on safety, basic repair, and um, education. They're one-hour clinics. They're free to anyone to pre-register, and they can go to our website, cycleoakville.ca, and find the information to register. But the first one is coming up Wednesday at 6, and the next one is this Saturday at 5.30, and then there will be four or more, uh, May 28th, May 31st, June 25th, and July 30th. We're really excited to partner with the Town of Oakville and CAA on the Watch for Bikes campaign this year, as well as the Youth Cycle program, which Share the Road is running at Sheridan College to encourage students to cycle and also to go to all three of our BIAs. So um, I would also like to mention that we had, a, we called it your Not Your Average AGM, <laughs> and had about 40 people come out, and out of that we got a lot of volunteers to take on some of these um, um, different things that we're doing, like the rides and the, the clinics. And we also had um, at that meeting, and I'd like to recognize David Harris, who's here tonight from the Oakville Cycling Club, and Natalie DeCombe from, the, um, from Cycle Oakville, and I'd like to thank them both for coming this evening. And that is it for me. So that's the update on Cycle Oakville and what we're doing here in Oakville. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, on behalf of all of our colleagues on Council, I thank you for the energy and enthusiasm of your dedication to cycling. I imagine that single-handedly you will convert us one by one to become just like the Danes and we'll bike Absolutely. everywhere. Absolutely. <laughs> thank, thank you very you. much. Um, Council, that concludes our uh, Oh, of the leads thing? That concludes our presentations, but staff would like to have a photo of the leads certificate. Do I understand that correctly? Um, very well. We'll do that, and then we'll uh, resume the meeting.
Council? This is our policy, not mine. I invite all of you to come and we'll stand in the semicircle here and the staff in front of us and we'll get a picture. And I think that'll be much more complete than uh, I'm sure Sue wanted to produce this as some of the pictures. Is she in front of you? Yes. Yes, you're going to have to get very close. Now you've got lots of, you can back up as far as you need and get as much headroom and legroom and everything as you want. Yep, you're going to get really close. Okay, so tighten up. Tighten up. Tighten up. Okay. Tighten up. okay, you're smiling. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Perfect, you got it. perfect. <laughs> All right, Council. Um, that brings us to our standing committee uh, reports. And you have before you the Community Services Committee of April 22nd and the Administrative Services, excuse me, uh, Committee of April 22nd. If there are no separations, Councillor Johnston moves approval of the two. I'm looking for a second. Councillor Robinson obliges. All those in favor? Opposed, if any. The reports are adopted. Council, I call your attention now to your consent item, uh, consent items on your agenda. How do you wish to proceed? Councillor Adams? I'll move both the recommendations of the consent items. Thank you. Will there be a second? Councillor Giddings, all in favor? Opposed? The consent items are adopted. Now that brings us to our first discussion item, the Oakville Hydro Quarterly Report and Authorization Requests. And the, the detailed recommendation is before you and you've had uh, your agenda to study. Um, there's a presentation from uh, Rob Lister, the president and CEO of Oakville Hydro, which I uh, recommend your attention to here at the center podium. President Lister, we're all ears. Mayor Burton, members of the council, good evening. This evening, we have three topics that we'd like to talk to you about. A little bit of follow-up from the ice storm that we had in 2000, December 2013 and Oakville Hydro's response to that. Talk a little bit about our tree trimming program in Oakville, the intent of which is to prevent tree trunks and tree branches from coming in contact with our energized power lines for safety and reliability purposes. And then thirdly, a little update on time of use rates that are going into effect May 1st across Ontario for the... Um, time of use rates. So I have with me tonight Chris Cudmore, who is Director of Distribution Operations, who's going to speak to you a little bit about the follow-up on the uh, ice storm, and he'll also talk about tree trimming, and Jim Collins, Chief Financial Officer, will talk about time of use rates. We also have a video that was put together by the Electricity Distributors Association, which was prepared to uh, illustrate Ontario's response to the ice storm in December. So with that, I'll ask Mr. Cudmore to come up and speak to you about the ice storm. Chris? Welcome, Mr. Cudmore. We're looking forward to your report. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. <clears throat> the storm had a significant impact on our system with widespread outages caused by overburdened trees and limbs. Most of the damage was south of the QE with two pockets at 6th line and 8th line north of the highway. 29,000 customers were, uh, were affected at the peak of the storm, and 70% of the customers were impacted overall. By midnight December 24th, more services were restored, and we were able to recover quickly, as the graph shows, and we provided assistance to the other LDCs by December 26th. The graph represents uh, the total smart meters that were off at one time, so you can see that there was quite a spike around Sunday, and then uh, we recovered quite quickly, uh, tapering off on the Monday. 
And just a note of interest, uh, the winter energy consumption was up approximately 4% because of the colder temperatures this winter. Here's a video that shows some of the impact to customers in Ontario, and this is uh, prepared by the Electrical Distribution Association. It was the first day of winter, and it began with freezing rain. By nightfall, the temperature dropped. The rain intensified. The result? An ice storm of devastating proportions, downing trees and power lines. By the time it was over, from Stratford to Kingston and points east, everything was coated in a thick layer of ice. Two million people were left without power, some for hours, others for days. This was when some 50 of Ontario's local power distribution companies, from inside and outside the affected areas, pulled together with their collective staff and contractors to restore the electricity whenever and wherever it was lost. This was supposed to be a holiday, but for people without power and the power distribution companies that swung into action, this was a holiday season they will not soon forget. Local hydro workers have cancelled vacations and continue to work around the clock. Officials have also reached out to neighboring cities for help. A hundred trucks currently en route to help. It's so difficult right now because we're in the middle of the storm cell. As you see, the storm is still here and the rain is coming down and freezing. And in about two hours, we've got terrible winds that are about to hit the city. And so we're going to be going around the clock for a number of days to restore power to all of our customers. Uh, we arrived there Monday night on the 23rd. And uh, we were told that um, it was 245 square miles of chaos. And uh, the Toronto guys that have been there as long as I've been here at Enwin said that they had never seen a storm like this. So uh, that's got to put things in perspective of what you know what, what was coming up and what was it was a it was just a disaster area. Trees down everywhere. It lasted seven days. There was power lines down, which was scary. It was terrible. There was no heat. It was completely dark. Her whole block was out. It was a nightmare. There was so much ice and snow on, I think it was the circuit breakers, right by our block. Our street was definitely affected. Like, we have very tree, like, forested area, and we had, like, tons of trees, like, all over the road falling down, on our roof, actually, too. We live in a condo. We didn't have hot water. And uh, so, basically, we couldn't take a shower. We couldn't do anything. We couldn't even cook, right? We take electricity for granted. We were worried about pipes freezing and that sort of thing. So that was the major concern. Finally did get it back after having to stick some of our food in snow banks and such. But, yeah, it took about five, six days. My mom actually left Durham to come to Toronto, thinking that Toronto would have power, and then Toronto didn't have power. And I was in Vaughan when it first happened, and I was watching the Transformers blow. They were out there, like we had, the trees were coming down on the lines. We, there's nothing they could do, right? They had to cut them first. They had to worry about safety of everybody that was there. They, they were fantastic. They got out there, they were in the cruise, they were freezing weather and out there just doing their best, trying to get the power on, getting all the brush taken away. It was awesome. It's the little things that, like cleaning the ice off the power lines that a lot of people don't think makes a difference could potentially spell life or death, and they made the difference. We are indebted to them for that. There's an awful lot of people, uh, electrical workers, uh, power workers, who are doing that kind of work every day across the province. Thank goodness we have people like that. Bless them, bless them. <laughs> we heard about what they were doing. They were heroic, actually. In a long holiday where you're supposed to stay with your family, where they gave their time to come and help everybody who was stranded or had emergencies, it's, it's amazing that they did this for us. Without them, we'd still be on the dock. So I thank you, uh, all of you. You work as a team, and uh, it's amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you so much for all your hard work. You guys aren't appreciated as much as you should be, but the city definitely relies on you, and it's a big thank you from the city of Toronto, Mississauga, and everywhere else that was affected. And you heard so much about the time and the resources that were spent, and these are individuals who are away from their friends and family over the holidays as well. So from, I guess, our household and everywhere else, we'd like to thank you all for your time and attention and 
It was nice to have our power back in time for at least New Year's. Thanks for giving up your holidays. Really, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Because you know, you guys give up your family time for our family, so thank you very, very much. It's just amazing the job they did. It's amazing. I'm proud of them. Thank you so much. Uh, so the fact that uh, power workers came from all over the province and just the way that Canadians band together to solve issues in crisis like this was really incredible. Thank you so very much for getting everyone back on their feet and letting people live again. After the storm, we evaluated our response and we'll be incorporating the lessons learned into our emergency operation plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have been working on an outage management system that will help us assess outages and respond quicker. This project has been in flight for two years and will be operational in the next few months. Uh, we had daily conference calls with the town staff to establish uh, priorities, work priorities, and uh, this worked extremely well and we're looking at expanding that to the regional level. As the storm progressed, the volumes, volume of calls spiked and our phone system became overloaded. Customers were unable to contact us. Uh, we've increased the number of phone lines to help resolve the issue and we're looking at options to join Service Oakville. Uh, we have plans in 2014 to put in an interactive voice response system that will uh, take customer information as well as provide information when they call. Uh, to take some pressure off our phone system, the outage management system will have a web, web portal that will give uh, outage information directly to the customer. Uh, the total amount spent to restore the system was $550,000 and the incremental costs are $364,000 and we're seeking cost recovery through the Ontario Energy Board. <clears throat> our 2014 line clearing program is expected to be completed in the first week of May. The program was delayed from a January start to March because of the ice storm cleanup and has been compressed to two months. The ongoing power line clearance program had a positive impact on the quick service restoral during the ice storm and is driven to provide public safety and system reliability. And here are a few examples of typical, typical line clearing work on the screen. On the left hand side that's a, a tree on uh, Queen, uh, Queen Mary and uh, the right hand side is Brookfield. We work closely with town forestry staff to manage the program. There are approximately 14,000 trees on the hydro corridor and they're split over three zones for a three year cycle. Customers receive letters explaining the program before it starts and we put local uh, or advertisements in the uh, local paper and plans are underway with forestry staff to uh, hold an open house in the fall for the 2015 line clearing program. Uh, thank you. and. Uh, Jim Collins will speak on the next points. Thank you very much, Mr. Cudmore. Mr. Collins, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, through you, Mayor, um, as mentioned, my name is Jim Collins. I'm the CFO of uh, Oakville Hydro. And I'll give you, hopefully, a very brief update on the uh, upcoming changes in electricity rates. Uh, um, we at Oakville Hydro have spent the last year or so preparing a uh, very large and comprehensive uh, cost of service application that we submitted to the Ontario Energy Board in October of 2013. The intent of the application is to reset our distribution rates um, for the next five years and uh, we're coming to the near the end of this process. Once approved, we will be in a position to be able to uh, inform Council of uh, new distribution rates for, um, for Oakville Hydro and our portion of the bill. But as you can see on this side, the Oakville Hydro portion is approximately 13% of an overall typical residential uh, hydro bill. The remainder goes to pay for the electricity, the uh, taxes and debt service coverage or charges, the Hydro One transmission of uh, electricity to one of our five transformer stations, and finally, the uh, provincial system operator fees for, uh, for the system. <clears throat> of the 19% uh, the of the Oakville Hydro Bill, which excludes the uh, water and sewer services, 
This is what we use to run our operation, to run the distribution system, to invest in new and also replacement infrastructure in the, um, in the uh, distribution system. The electrical portion of the, um, the, the bill is about 54% of a total bill. And this is what's being impacted by the time of use rate, uh, rates set by the Ontario Energy Board. As you can see on this slide, the, uh, the rates are going up and they'll be effective May 1st. And the increase in the rates is approximately $2.83 per month on the electricity line on a bill. It's about 2.4% of an overall typical residential bill of 800 kilowatt hours per month. <clears throat> As I mentioned, it was going to be a very brief update. And later on, we'll be in a position to uh, inform council of uh, the changes to our distribution portion once we've gone through the final approval with the OEB. So with that, I would like to open it up for any questions that uh, we can answer with respect to the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Questions? Mr. Collins, thank you very much, and thank your colleagues for a very good report. Thank you. Council, I would uh, ask uh, for uh, a mover and seconder for the recommendation. Councillor Knoll and Councillor Lapworth, all in favor? Opposed? That is carried. Council, you have your... There, there are no confidential items on this agenda. You have the information items previously circulated and the status of outstanding issues. And that brings us to new business, notices of motion, emergency, congrats congratulatory or condolence uh, statements. And, oh, sorry, none of my, thank you, Councillor Dudek. All right, on your confidential agenda, uh, Your Worship, that was part. That was item number two of item three. That the confidential item was incorporated in part in item three. Thank you, three. Councillor Adams. Uh, I was temporarily confused. Councillor Duddick, uh, item number two of the resolution moved by Councillor Noel and Lapworth. You had me. You had me shaky there for a moment, though. <coughs> All right, so. We, we have a notice of motion uh, for consideration at the uh, council meeting on May 26th, and uh, this is by Councillors Adams and Johnston. And um, Councillor Adams, would you like to speak about this? Your Worship, uh, if it's okay with you, I'd like to read it out uh, for the public, because uh, I know there's been public discussion and debate about this particular issue, and I want to make it clear that the intent is that it be discussed on May 26th, not tonight. Uh, there are members of the public who are aware of it coming forward on the 26th. That, that's why I don't want it to be, I don't want to waive the uh, procedural bylaw this evening. Uh, and the item is preserving Canada Post door-to-door -door delivery. It's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Johnson. And uh, it reads, whereas Canada Post has announced plans to cease door-to-door -door delivery in Oakville and other communities, whereas many citizens, especially seniors and persons with disabilities, will be impacted by this change, and whereas issues of concern for the town of Oakville related to the placement of the new community mailboxes include, but are not limited to, access for seniors and persons with disabilities, the location of the boxes and impacts to adjacent properties, traffic, parking, land use policy, street lighting, littering, graffiti removal, theft and vandalism, snow and ice clearance, downloading responsibilities and costs. Therefore, it be resolved that the federal government direct Canada Post to maintain the current system of residential door-to-door -door postal delivery in Canada, and that the Federation of Canadian Municipalities be requested to support this motion, and that a copy of this resolution be sent to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, the Region of Halton, City of Burlington, Town of Milton, Town of Halton Hills, local members of Parliament and members of Provincial Parliament, and Canada Post. And this will be uh, brought forward for discussion and debate on May 26th. Thank you, Councillor. Um, are there, I'm, I'm not aware of any other notices of motion or new business. Is there any other? Councillor DeMoff? Uh, just one quickly. I wanted to recognize that today was the National Day of Mourning and also to thank all Mayor and uh, all members of Council who were there. And I know there were very few who were unable to be there. It wasn't that they didn't want to be there. They were there in spirit with us. So I just wanted to uh, recognize today and, and thank Council for its support for that. Thank you very much, Councillor DeMoff, and thank you for your work in helping to organize it. Councillor Johnston? 
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd just like to bring to everyone's attention that the Halton Environmental Network is their 10th anniversary dinner on Wednesday, May the 28th, the Oakville Convention Centre, and they can purchase tickets through eventbrite.ca, hen tent at eventbrite.ca, and I encourage people to attend. Thank you, Councillor. And you can't get ticket number two because Councillor Johnston bought it, and uh, you can't get ticket number one because that's the one I got. Um, anyone else? Any other new business? All right. Let's move along to regional reports and question period. Any regional reports or questions? Seeing none. Uh, are there any requests for reports? Acting Mayor uh, Elgar, I have a request for report, and I, I would like to pass the uh, chair to you. For sure. Mayor Burton, um, we will now hear your report, your request for report. Thank you. Um, this is a request for report moved by uh, me and seconded by Councillor Giddings. It's called Oakville Historic Business Areas Special Measures. And this is the, uh, you have a copy before you and I'm gonna read it for the public's benefit. That council be requested to, re that staff be requested to report back with a two part report as soon as possible to provide council with A, a master plan summary document to serve as a comprehensive reference tool to tie together all of council's current initiatives for the three business improvement areas in Oakville. And B, a work status outline with updated recommendations for measures of short, medium, and long-term assistance with the necessary public consultations and public communications plans for the downtown Oakville business area to serve as a comprehensive roadmap for the next six years expressed in the three successive two-year periods that lie ahead for the downtown Oakville business improvement area and that can be thought of as number one, the immediate action period from 2014 to 2015, uh, where we focus on recovery and strengthening for the business districts from winter with such measures as staff may recommend and council may approve, such as a free parking program and, and anything else that, that staff may bring. Um, I'm ad-libbing here, but uh, such as marketing and so on. A second period from 2016 to 2017, I'll call it the impact mitigation plan, where um, we must renew the, lo the Lakeshore roadbed pipes and streetscape with such construction impact mitigation and other measures as staff may recommend and council may approve. And third, in the two year period from 2018 and 19 and then beyond, the, revitaliz the revitalization plan, where we look for the rejuvenation and marketing of the downtown Oakville historic business district with such marketing and other measures as staff may recommend and council may approve. And um, I would ask for uh, your unanimous support of this re the request for a report. Uh, um, Mr. Mayor, you, we do have a, a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. First, uh, yes, Councillor Robinson. Thank, thank you, uh, Acting Mayor. Mr. Mayor, is it appropriate for me to ask questions now of this or does it, would it be better to wait? I, I just have some Questions about the wording of your various uh, sentences here. I want uh, to say that I think maybe you could expand a little bit on what you were thinking. So well, first of all, go to re to count, I'm not an going to staff. I, I don't believe I'm in opposition to anything that's here. In fact, anything that we can do to assist any of our BIAs is good. But I'd just like to ask some questions. Maybe I'm missing something. Why is it referred to as the Oakville Historic Business Areas? Why, why the word historic? I'm missing something. I was looking for a, word, a label that would distinguish our, and our, the Bronte, the Kerr, and the downtown Oakville are our historic business areas, uh, but I'm not hung up on what we label it. I'm just trying to distinguish them from malls. Historic or maybe original. <laughs> the word original might also uh, be appropriate, but I won't. I, I could wish I could wish I'd chosen that, but I didn't want to get hung up on some hair splitting about who was first where. No, okay, let me ask a couple other questions, uh, and maybe this is me. But we talked about uh, the, the the Oakville business areas. 
we talk about this uh, first bullet down current initiatives for the three BIAs, and then you go to the next b bullet and you talk about the downtown Oakville BIA. There seems to be some s something not quite coming together here. All three BIAs and then the Oakville BIA. It, um, the first part is to draw together for everyone's attention all that we are already doing for Kerr and Brawny, lest, you know, so that they don't feel like they're being ignored, and because they haven't been ignored by this council. And then the second bit is to say, only the downtown Oakville BIA must endure two years of significant surgery to its streetscape and its roadbed. No other BIA faces that challenge. And so we need to respect the need for all of us to help um, pull that section through the challenge ahead in that surgery in the complete rebuild of the roadbed of the pipes and, and uh, hopefully an improvement to the streetscape. Okay, and the other question is the second last bullet, Your Worship, renewal of Lakeshore roadbed pipes. Should it not say downtown? We, we don't want Lakeshore Road and Oakville and Bronte dug up right now. I would, I would gladly tell you that the word downtown is there now. Oh. You've just put it there. Oh, did you? And the last, the last one is item three. Uh, you talk about a revitalization plan, which is so important on an ongoing basis for any BIA. Uh, it seems that, again, Your Worship, you're just talking about revitalization of the downtown Oakville district. Why not all BIAs? Well, if all BIAs were having the surgery, perhaps I would have thought that right. it was appropriate to say that about each. I'm pretty sure that neither of the other BIAs would like to have the reconstruction. You're right. And so that's why I worded it that way. Okay, thanks, Your Worship, for bringing forward with this, and we'll be interested. I'll be interested <coughs> in seeing what the report looks like when it comes back. Thank you, Councillor Robinson. Next, we have Councillor uh, Pam Demoff, and then uh, Councillor Duddick. Thank you, and um, thank you for the, the request for a report. I'm a little disappointed in how we got to here. The first one that um, I guess was circulated to the downtown BIA was strictly about free parking, so it's nice to see it's, it's moved. I do have a couple questions, though. Um, the immediate action plan, uh, I'm wondering why we're not also looking at the impact that some of these may have on the other BIAs, in particular Kerr Village, because I know at one point there was discussion at, I think it was the chamber breakfast, that the Kerr BIA would be included in any um, kind of free parking program that was being promoted at the time. So it's, it's no longer included in this, and I'm just wondering why. Um, my, so I'll let you answer that, and then I have another question. Um. I, I wouldn't say that it was not included. If you'll let me read you what I wrote, it says recovery by the business districts, which is more than one, and uh, from winter with such measures as staff may recommend and council may approve such as a free parking program. So <laughs> number one, uh, for those districts that have paid parking, they're clear, this clearly includes in my mind Kerr as well as downtown. and. Um, it also includes Brani in that uh, such as free parking means to only start the, the thinking. They may have other measures that may apply equally across all three. So by no means was I trying to leave Kerr out. In fact, uh, I was happy to include Kerr and I, I thought I was doing that. Perhaps it's the wording in the paragraph above because it says two year periods ahead for the downtown Oakville BIA. If, if you would like me to amend the wording, I'd be glad to do it for you. I thought the plural uh, made it impossible to uh, leave out Kerr. But um, you tell me the words you'd like and we'll add them. Well, I guess it would be recovery by the three, um, just name them specifically, Oakville, downtown, or downtown Oakville, Kerr Village, and Bronte BIA business districts. Um, would you, for economy of motion, would you be satisfied with recovery by all the business districts? If, if that does not include, yes, yeah, sure, that's fine. Um, Thank you. 
The second question, though. For the suggestion. <laughs> the numbers two and three. I'm not quite sure why we're looking at that, which is two years ahead, when we don't actually know at this point what the actual renewal is going to be. We, we know that there will be construction, but it would make more sense to me to be dealing with a um, impact mitigation plan once we actually know what the plan is. Because at this point, um, it's still under discussion and we don't know what we're going to be doing. This uh, report request contemplates that that piece might come later. But it's very important to the businesses in downtown Oakville to know that we're thinking about mitigation and that it will not be an overlooked component of it. It's there more for reassurance and uh, the timing is up to staff. I, I, I would ask on what possible grounds it would, I mean, I, I ask you to support it. So, so they don't have to have all of this done for whenever that is that they're bringing it back then. They, some of this could be um, to follow, is that? Yes, it was my thought that the intermediate and the longer term, the second and third, would uh, not have the same urgency of being back uh, on uh, May 26th. And could we include something in here about an economic development plan? Um, we're st I'm, maybe that's... Um, we, ha we haven't actually included that wording. I, perhaps it's, it's going to be looked at, maybe it's direction to staff, but if we can, it's some kind of economic development plan for the BIA is going forward too. It's, it's my understanding that staff have already engaged a consultant to do that work uh, in emulation of what we had already done for the Brawny BIA. Okay, thank you. I, hope I, I wasn't I aware of that, so. Uh, I, hope, I hope you're somewhat reassured that we have a, uh, a long-running, comprehensive concern for these areas, and and that all of council for many years has been charged with uh, the importance of this matter. And I thank you very much for suggestions. And uh, and if everyone will read in the word "all," uh, that change is also uh, happily accepted. Okay. Next, we have uh, Councillor Duddy. Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, just under the impact mitigation plan, um, I, I would assume, and I guess that's why I want some clarification, whether through yourself or staff, that they would also be bringing forward um, the current existing um, mitigation uh, programs we have. I think the region of Halton, when we had it on uh, Kerr Street, when we had a lot of reconstruction, there was something whereby businesses could apply for, because it was a regional, uh, correct, business dis disruption. And so consequently, they could apply to the region of Halton, providing they provided the adequate documentation. But I'm just, Sometimes, rather than reinvent the wheel, if there's something already in place, in this case, whether or not it's us versus the region. Yes, Councillor. Uh, the, the language I adopted, other measures as staff may recommend, was intended to give them the full scope of everything. That, in other words, we want to we bring to bear our full toolkit from both levels of government. I want to call Council's attention to um, the notion of a construction impact uh, mitigation uh, plan. In major construction projects, uh, it's sometimes thought wise to adopt a plan that tells people how the work will be progressed and, and to give them in black and white and English the, the details of how the work will be conducted in order to try to not disrupt them. And you know things like hours and and uh, size of the chunks to be done. So it's a staging uh, plan, not just a financial compensation plan. So thank you very much for those questions and suggestions. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Councillor Adams. Uh, first of all, I wanted to congratulate the mayor for bringing this forward. I think it's uh, it's it's really good to uh, see the outreach that you've done with the the business groups to. Um, understand and see the, the mitigation requirements that are coming down from the work that we're, we're proposing on Lakeshore. Uh, I, I know I've heard many people ask about this particular issue and uh, giving them something to work with I think is important. So thank you very much for all of that. 
and I, I know on the free parking issue, our staff will report back on the financial implications of it as well as part of the report. So thank you again. I appreciate your, uh, your endeavor. Thank you. I, I, for your added information, I met with, the, uh, with um, five or six members of the Chamber this afternoon, the Chamber of Commerce, that is, and I, I understand from that meeting that they were delighted with this as well. They especially complimented the comprehensive nature of it and breaking it out into the short, the middle, and the long term. Uh, people need uh, certainty. They need confidence. And I think it's our job as council to try to lay things out in a way that makes it as easy as possible for them to have that confidence and certainty. So thank you very much for your, your comments and suggestions. Uh, are there any other questions? If not, I have a few, uh, Mr. Mayor. And it's related to um, May the 26th is the date. I didn't see it in here, but I heard you say uh, in a response to a question, that the immediate action plan will be coming back on May the 26th. That's the plan? I've worded it to give, st we have a bylaw that says that uh, if you set a deadline and staff can't meet it, they don't have to meet it. They meet it when they can. And so out of respect for staff and our bylaw, I've said as soon as possible. It's my expectation that the immediate piece uh, it's my expectation and my hope that the immediate piece would uh, be available to us uh, at the uh, May 26th council meeting. That's right. Now, in, in the immediate action plan, um, I know as you mentioned free parking, I would also wonder if you and uh, Councillor Giddings would consider adding in a second alternative for staff, and that would be to do a bit of a a pre-run to find out what would happen if we in fact took out the middle lane on Lakeshore and then allowed the businesses to have restaurants or whatever over the sidewalk the way you see it all over the place in other cities in the summertime as a trial and that they could because you could have temporary curbs go down and you could find out how it works for distribution of goods to the stores because I think the plan is long term to in fact get rid of the, the third lane on Lakeshore Road and I'm thinking what a perfectly perfect time to do a trial in 2014 to find out if in fact it would work and I think that in itself could really add to a, a huge boost in business for the downtown um, business merchants down there because like I know when, um, when we were in Halifax a few years ago people were get, they were getting the plywood out on the streets on the streets and it worked very well and I just wonder if, 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 if the two uh, the mover and the second of the motion would consider adding that in as a, as a perfect chance for a trial. Councillor, uh, because of the wording that, I, that we chose, I think that's already a possibility and that uh, the fate of the third lane is already the, the work of the downtown study. So uh, I, I don't think we need to actually change our wording to get that and many other ideas back. Okay, if you don't, I just thought if you put in free parking, why wouldn't you put something in that you want a trial that we know we're want, we want to do? Uh, I'm I, I leave it to the, the mover and the seconder. Right? Thank you, Councillor, for your suggestion. Now, but but uh, I, I believe it's, it's implied to look for everything. Now, as far as our mission statement and vision statement, will we be, how do we do that? Do we revise that? Because I know in our, in our budget report, we always charge for parking because it's always full recovery. And that's part of our mission statement and our vision statement that we have. So how do we change it, switch it up? Let's wait and see what staff will recommend. Okay, a lot, yeah, because it's a, it is a fair, it's $2.6 million is the full commercial parking downtown. Councillor, I'm aware. That's good. And also the capital also is $1.2 in that time frame, so. Councillor, I'm yeah. aware. Okay. Well, I'm asking for a report, not a decision. Okay, well, I, I just, I'm looking forward to seeing it. A anyway, that's, uh, there are no other questions, so I would uh, move it back to yourself after we've done the vote on it. If there are no other questions, we call for uh, a vote on the motion. For all those in favor of, uh, count of Mayor Burton's uh, re request, it's unanimous. Thank you. I return the gavel to you. Thank you very much, Acting Mayor. Uh, you're a fine Acting Mayor. Any others? Uh, Councillor Grant. Thank you. Um, it's a request for report. Just quick and to the point, uh, based on experience from a local resident who uh, uses the caravan services. Um, and basically, we're just asking that staff report back on opportunities to provide caravan services to places of worship and medical offices within Oakville, but outside areas currently served by Oakville Transit. 
That's the request in sum. Councillor Grant, do you have a seconder? Councillor Knoll seconds. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed, if any? And that carries. You had an easier ride, Councillor Grant. <laughs> well, I didn't mention any areas of town specifically. All right. Um, I would now ask for a mover and seconder for consideration of reading of the bylaws. Councillor Duddick and Councillor Robinson, this is approval for the bylaws listed in the agenda as is. All those in favor? Opposed, if any? They are adopted. That completes our agenda. Thank you very much for your time and attention. It's been great working with you, and we are adjourned.